Today we're going to be taking a look at the flatless component in React Native. It's a new component with version 0.43 and it makes creating a efficient scrolling list of data much more simple to set up than, for example, the list view component in the past. In this video we'll just be running through some of the, the real basics of using this component and in future ones we'll be covering a few more advanced things like infinite scrolling and pull to refresh. Before we actually start diving into the code I want to give you a few pieces of information up front. First off is we're using random user generator API to actually get the data we're going to be using to populate this. So we'll make a remote request to their API to actually get the data back. And then I'll be using React Native Elements, which is a React Native UI kit, uh, to actually handle designing things. And finally, all of this code is available on GitHub, and I'll have a link to that down in the description below. Also, let's just take a moment to walk through this actual application so you know where we're starting at, because we're not starting at ground zero. You can see we've got a lot of behind the scenes stuff already going on. So first off, we make a few imports from React and React Native, standard stuff there, we won't cover that. And then in here, we're setting up some default state in the constructor of our component. Uh, we're, we're tracking whether the content is currently loading or it's not. Data is an array where we'll actually store the response from our server. Page is a variable that we're using in our, and the same applies to seed. Those are two variables we're using in our request to the random user generator. Uh, those will be in future tutorials, but it's still relevant now because we're using them in the URL. But basically the page allows us to specify which page of data that we want to get back. The seed allows us to specify what data we want to get back, kind of like a predefined seed of data. We've got an error, which is just going to keep an error if we get one when we're making a request to the server. And finally, refreshing, and that's just to specify when we set up pull to refresh, whether we're currently making a refresh request or not. Then in a, inside of our component did mount, you can see that all we're doing is making a remote request. So as soon as this component successfully mounts, we make a remote request to the random user generator API to fetch the necessary data. And the bulk of what we're doing at the beginning falls into this make remote request method. So you can see here we're accessing the component state and like I said before we're using the page and the seed variables uh, inside of the URL when we're, let's make this a little wider, when we're making the request to the server. So we've got the URL and this is just how the random user generator works. Uh, we can pass in the seed, we're using that one or in the future it'll be one, two, three, so on and so forth. We're doing the same with the page variable and finally we're specifying that we want 20 results back. So we want 20 users back whenever we make this re remote request. Then before we make the request we're going to set that loading variable state variable to true just so we can show the proper activity indicator once that's set up. We then go ahead and actually make the request to the URL and then we store all of this data inside of the component state which we'll use to then drive the flat list itself. So that's all that matters that's going on behind the scenes. Analyze this code a little bit more if you're interested in what's going on and we'll talk about it more as we actually go ahead and write the different components of this example. So with the basics out of the way, let's go ahead and actually start writing this. You can see I've already imported flat list from React Native. Then we're also going to want to import the list and the list item from React Native Elements. Okay, and then we can go ahead and actually start writing our component. We'll get rid of all of this right now, and we're going to replace it with list, which comes from React Native Elements. And then inside of here is where we're actually going to start using that flat list component. We'll make that self-closing, and the first thing we want to do, and this is the most critical component of the flat list component, and that prop is the data. And data, unlike the list view of past, all it needs to be is an array. So we've got an array of objects. We will have an array of objects once we make that remote request. So all we can say here is this.state.data, and that array will then go ahead and actually drive the flat list. The next required piece of using a flat list is the render item prop, and that's going to be a function. And from that function, you want to return a component. So the way we actually access the data for the current item that's being rendered is inside of this function. And the first argument of this function is going to be an object in itself. And the data we're interested in is on the item key. So we want to destructure that and we're just going to have direct access to item. And that's going to represent each user as they're rendered in our list. 
I can then go ahead and use the list item, which I won't cover much on what's going on here, but all we're saying is uh, we're going to give it a round avatar. The title's just going to be their full name. The subtitle is going to be uh, just their email address. And then finally their avatar, which is something we get back from the API. We'll specify what the URI is, and that's going to be item.picture.thumbnail. If I can type this correctly. So if we save this, we can see that we've generated the scrolling list of data. It's very simple. We're able to scroll through it. We're rendering all of that data we get back from us. But you can see down here we're getting an error. And what this error is saying that for each one of the elements, so each one of these items, we need to have a key on that. And that's part of what makes this flat list efficient within React and React Native. So to fix that, what we're going to do is actually use a different prop on the flat list, and that's called the key extractor. So by default, the flat list is going to check for a key prop on this item, but our item doesn't have a key. So we want to actually specify what we want to use, and this key has to be unique to each element. So if you have like a database ID that you're returning with the user, that would be an excellent use case for the key. However, in this case, we don't have a database key coming to us from the random user generator. So what we're going to do is actually use the uh, user's email address, which we know is going to be unique. And to do that, we just want to return the item.email. And in this case, the first argument of this key extractor function is going to be the item. So if I save this, you can see renders exactly the same, but we don't have that error we previously did. So the next thing I want to do is actually show you how to render a separator between each element in this list without using the de default. So in this case, the React Native elements does have borders between each element, but we want to customize it a bit, and we don't want this border down at the bottom of the screen or at the top. So first thing we want to do is actually get rid of those. And to do that, we're going to go up to this list. I'm going to say container style. And then I'm going to say the border top width should be zero, as well as the border bottom width should also be zero. So I can save those. And then you can see the border at the top is gone border at the bottom is gone. And we want to do the same thing for the actual list item. So again, I'll say container style. And this time we just need to say the border bottom width is going to be zero. So we've no longer got any of those borders between the elements inside of our list. And to actually render separator between the different elements in our list, we need to pass a new prop to our flat list component. And that prop is going to be item separator make sure you spell it right, I never do, item separator component, and then this is going to return a component to actually be rendered here. And in this case, we're going to put it in a new method on our component, so we'll say this.render separator. Okay, and now we need to actually create this render separator method. So we'll go up here, and we'll specify this, and all it's going to be is a basic view. So I'm going to return a component. It's going to be self-closing. And we're going to give it a style with a height of 1, a width of 80%. Sorry, I need to make sure we type this out correctly, which is going to be a string. And this is actually going to be 86%. We'll give it a background color and that's going to be CED 0 CE make sure I close this string okay and then finally we want to give it a margin left of 14 percent and that's just going to basically allow this uh, separator not to render until the text which is very much approximate um, might not work on other screens but you can see here once I save that that the separators are rendering between each list item but there's no separator at the top and there's no separator at the bottom, which is exactly what we were looking for. So to render the separator, just use the item separator component, create a function, and then return a component from uh, that function to actually display between the different elements. 
Next thing we're going to add is a header. So at the top of this list, we want a static piece of data to actually show up and then to scroll away with the content. And to do that, I'm going to import the search bar from React Native Elements. Get rid of that. And then just like before, we're going to specify a new prop on our flat list component. This time it's going to be list header component. And just like the separator, it's going to be this dot render header. And we can go ahead and create this new function that's going to be render header. And from here, we want to go ahead and actually return that new search bar component we imported before. And it's not going to actually do anything, so we're just going to set a placeholder. Um, I'll just say type here, and we can also specify a few other things, light theme and round. I won't go into those details, but you can see that with that rendered, I do have an error, and that's because I accidentally deleted stuff. So it uh, looks like I deleted the import for list item. So I'll scroll back up here. I did indeed delete that. So we'll import it again, list item, save it. Okay, things are rendering correctly again. And you can see with adding that one prop, this one function, we've now got this header up here, which we can use. And as we scroll through our list, it'll actually scroll away. Finally, let's add a footer to the bottom of this list. So first thing I want to do is actually import the activity indicator from React Native. And now just like the other times, we're going to say list footer component, this.render footer. Now we'll go ahead and actually write this render footer function. All right, and to do this, we'll, sit, we'll again return a view, but inside of this view, we're going to have an activity indicator, and we're going to say it's going to be animating, and the size of it is going to be large. So if I save this, and then I'll add a few things here to our actual view. First is going to be padding vertical 20 just to give it a bit of space. And we're going to go ahead and give it a border top width. That's going to be one. And then the border top color is going to be, again, that CED zero CE. Uh, close this, save it, and you could see when I refresh this, that loading indicator does show up for us. And if we scroll to the bottom of the list, it's also showing up for us. So in our case, for future want, for future tutorials, we want this loading indicator to only show up when we're loading more data. And to do that, since we're tracking the loading state when we're making a request or not, we can go ahead and say if uh, if we're not loading any information, then just return null. So return nothing in that footer. If I save it, you can see that loading indicator does show up for a brief moment. But if we scroll to the bottom of the list, since we don't have any way to request more data, that loading indicator is no longer at the bottom of our list. So those are just the basic insides of the flat list component and how to use it. I'll have future tutorials coming up on uh, pull to refresh and infinite scrolling with the flat list component, so keep an eye out for those. And if you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to give this channel a subscribe for more React Native tutorials coming soon.